Hello my fellow skeptics and Christians, today I'm going to address a video made by Godless Cranium critiquing a video I made a while back in which I talk about 8 questions atheists can't answer objectively. I had to change the title to include the term objectively because, the mo because most atheists that I've debated think that they can answer questions subjectively meaning according to their own opinion and it being sufficient. Now what I'm looking for is answers through a scientific lens. So let's see what Godless Cranium has to say. Uh, hello YouTube. Hello Jacob. Today I'm going to discuss eight questions that I know for a fact no atheist can answer. <laughs> I kind of find it humorous how Godless Cranium, when addressing life challenging questions that can't be answered, tries to downplay the questions with comedy sketches. This is a tactic often used by secularists who really fear the question's implications. Wow, that's an arrogant claim. What you got for me then? The first question is if morality is an objective, does that mean that what Hitler did? during the Holocaust isn't inherently wrong. <laughs> Sorry, I can <laughs> Sorry, I can I can read one. Hold on here. <laughs> that was funny. are just the consequence of That's nature. a little rude. Can anyone truly say that what Hitler did was it wrong? That it was only nature? To Hitler at the time, it wasn't wrong. He likely thought he was doing a service to his country. We are the ones who create a moral code and declare something to be wrong, and we do that using reason and empathy. We do it to help our species survive. If we do it to help our species survive, and we do it because of empathy, then why did Hitler do evil? Why did he try to kill millions and millions of innocent people? See how your logic does not apply to this situation. Now, according to Good and Evil, I'm going to go ahead and let Peter Kreft, a professor of philosophy at Boston College, address your assertions. My argument does not mean that atheists can't be moral. Of course, atheists can behave morally, just as theists can behave immorally. In the same way that animals can behave morally. Let's start then with a question about good and evil. Where do good and evil come from? Atheists typically propose a few possibilities. Among these are evolution, reason, conscience, human nature, and utilitarianism. I will show you that none of these can be the ultimate source of morality. Why not from evolution? Because any supposed morality that is evolving can change. If it can change for the good or the bad, there must be a standard above these changes to judge them as good or bad. For most of human history, more powerful societies enslaved weaker societies and prospered. That's just the way it was, and no one questioned it. Now we condemn slavery. But based on a merely evolutionary model, that is, an ever-changing view of morality, who is to say that it won't be acceptable again one day? Slavery was once accepted, but it was not, therefore, acceptable. And if you can't make that distinction between accepted and acceptable, you can't criticize slavery. And if you can make that distinction, you are admitting to objective morality. But what about reasoning? While reasoning is a powerful tool to help us discover and understand morality, it cannot be the source of morality. For example, criminals use reasoning to plan a murder without their reason telling them that murder is wrong. And was it reasoning or something higher than reasoning that led those Gentiles who risked their lives to save Jews during the Holocaust? The answer is obvious. It was something higher than reasoning because risking one's life to save a stranger was a very unreasonable thing to do. Nor can conscience alone be the source of morality. 
Every person has his own conscience, and some people apparently have none. Heinrich Himmler, chief of the brutal Nazi SS, successfully appealed to his henchmen's consciences to help them do the right thing in murdering and torturing millions of Jews and others. How can you say your conscience is right and Himmler's is wrong if conscience alone is the source of morality? The answer is, you can't. Some people say human nature is the ultimate source of morality. But human nature can lead us to do all sorts of reprehensible things. In fact, human nature is the reason we need morality. Our human nature leads some of us to do real evil and leads all of us to be selfish, unkind, petty, and egocentric. I doubt you would want to live in a world where human nature was given free reign. Utilitarianism is the claim that what is morally right is determined by whatever creates the greatest happiness for the greatest number. But to return to our slavery example, if 90% of the people would get great benefit from enslaving the other 10%, would that make slavery right? According to utilitarianism, it would. We've seen where morality can't come from. Now let's see where it does come from. What are moral laws? Unlike the laws of physics or the laws of mathematics, which tell us what is, the laws of morality tell us what ought to be. But like physical laws, they direct and order something, and that something is right human behavior. But since morality doesn't exist physically, there are no moral or immoral atoms or cells or genes, its cause has to be something that exists apart from the physical world. That thing must therefore... That also addresses our free will as human, as human beings. In an atheist worldview, we do not have free will. Everything that's the core of our being is natural. So even doing evil would be considered natural. There's no such thing as actual evil. It's just a part of our nature. Or be above nature or supernatural. The very existence of morality proves the existence of something beyond nature and beyond man. Just as a design suggests a designer, moral commands suggest a moral commander. Moral laws must come from a moral lawgiver. Well, that sounds pretty much like what we know as God. So the consequence of this argument is that whenever you appeal to morality, you are appealing to God, whether you know it or not. You're talking about something religious, even if you think you're an atheist. Thank you, Peter Crift, Professor Peter Crift. Now let's see what Godless Cranium has to say. Even if your God created morality and enforced it, why would or should his morality supersede our own? How did this creature come to the conclusion that... It's because it's an ingrained in our very reality, in our very nature. These laws, just like the laws of physics, are ingrained in our reality. So that's just the same way that you cannot object to thermodynamics. You cannot object to, to God's moral law. Killing people is wrong, for example. Humans aren't even the only animals that display moral codes or codes of conduct. For example, Now, here Godless Cranium starts talking about animals and how animals display evil and good. But that has nothing to do with this argument. Even in a world where God exists, you, would, you could even see animals displaying good and evil. But the fact is, is that they do not have a free will spirit. They do not have a consciousness like we do in which we can display free will and actually reason. Some research suggests animals have a sense of outrage when social codes are violated. Chimpanzees may punish other chimps for violating certain rules of the social order. Male bluebirds that catch their female partner stepping out may beat the female, said Hal Herzog, a psychologist at Western Carolina University who studies how humans think about animals. And there are many examples of animals demonstrating ostensibly compassionate or empathetic behaviors towards other animals, including humans. In one experiment, hungry rhesus monkeys refused to electrically shock their fellow monkeys, even when it meant getting food for themselves. In another study, a female gorilla named Binti rescued an unconscious three-year-old human boy who had fallen into her enclosure at the Brookline Zoo. <sighs> um, I'm sorry, guys. Just, just stick with them for a little bit. Illinois, protecting the child from other gorillas and even calling for human help. And when a car hit and injured a dog on a busy Chilean freeway several years ago, its canine compatriot dodged traffic, risking its life to drag the unconscious dog to safety. 
All those examples suggest that animals have some sense of right and wrong, Roland said. I think what's at the heart of following morality is the emotions, Roland said. Evidence suggests that animals can act on those sorts of emotions. So as you can see, just because we create moral codes doesn't mean those codes are any less important or valuable. Our ethics continue to... Question 2. If your meaning to life is subjective and your sense of purpose in life is truly meaningless when you take into account how brief it is in the geological timescale and how the universe will one day be destroyed, why do you try so hard... Or why do you hold others to your subjective moral standards? Why do you judge God? Why do you feel the need to judge God? Now, excuse my language here. Uh, I did not mean to say that, you know, atheists judge God, but they judge religion. They judge our belief in God and everything that's, that's stated in the Bible about what God did. Like, haven't you ever heard an atheist say, well, God is immoral because he uh, flooded the world killing um, innocent animals or innocent babies or whatever. You know, you've, you've, you've heard that argument before, right? So in that sense, that's what I'm asking. Why do atheists feel the sense they have the objective standard to judge God? That's more than one question, but let's start with my life being meaningless. I don't think my life is meaningless right here and right now. Just because something doesn't last forever doesn't mean it's meaningless. My life. Uh, I'm not asking, like, this is a subjective answer. Of course, this is his opinion, right? This is his opinion that he's, he's, he's going to make. I'm going to go ahead and let him finish. Uh, hello, YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and let him finish talking. So it's meaning to the people in my life, such as my girlfriend, friends, family, and so on. As far as the universe is concerned, I am meaningless. In the big scheme of things, I am smaller than a grain of sand, standing on a minuscule pebble, orbiting a tiny spark in a vast ocean we call space. And that's okay. The universe doesn't have to care whether I'm alive or not, because I care. The people around me care. At this moment in time, that's what matters to me. Second, I don't judge God. I don't think God exists. What I tend to do is judge the ideas of truth claims religion has produced. I also but what do you judge it? by by what standard your own standard your own personal preferences by your own ideas ideals and beliefs is that what you base it on judge the actions of religious believers who use their religion as motivation for actions i would deem to be either ethical or unethical for example if christianity but by what standard you understand because in a world where your life is meaningless you, you yourself might not think your life is meaningless but to the rest of the world or to to I mean to nature itself your life is purposeless you know and why should other people respect your opinion what, what what's by what standard can we all look to and say hey um, that standard is correct because of whatever you believe in when you motivate someone to go out and volunteer in a soup kitchen then all the power to them I might wish they do it for different reasons but I'm not going to argue against their action on the other hand, if someone thinks killing apostates is a moral action, I would definitely argue against it and the ideology that might have played a role in the shaping of what I would consider to be an extremely unethical belief and behavior. Question 3. What proof do you have to say that God doesn't exist? To prove that God doesn't exist, you have to have a logical reason as to why the universe came into existence out of the eternal realm of nothingness. I don't need any proof to say I don't believe God exists. I don't believe the claims you and people like you make. It's up to you to prove your claims. How our universe began is a separate question. Just because we don't know something doesn't mean you get to assert your particular brand of deity is the correct answer. If you want to make that claim, you need to present some evidence to support it. Question. There is plenty of evidence and logic and reason behind a God claim, okay? So um, if, we, if we can point deductively to a beginning of the universe, saying that space and time came into existence, we know that there was an eternity from which it must have came from. If there was no eternity, then it just popped, magically popped into existence. And if you want to accept that as, as, as just, you know, as your truth, then, that, then that's your religion. That's your belief, okay? And this is not, I just, this is not a, a question where you can just say, I don't know. No, we can follow the logical steps to a beginning of the entire universe to a point where there was no reason for it to come into existence, all right? And from that, we can point to an eternal cause, a causer, 
you know, because why else would it come into existence? At this point in time, something must have decided without space and time to bring it into existence. And then you can say, well, there is no before, before um, space time. And I, I actually addressed this, so I ain't going to address it again. I addressed it in my video. Um, let me see, the name of my video is, and God. Dear Atheists, The Logic Behind God. Four. Where and why did the universe Whoa, this video is getting a little long. And so I'm going to go ahead and, and cut it off there. Um, I'm going to try to make another video addressing Godless cran Craniums arguments made against my video <clears throat> in another video and um, we'll see so you guys tell me what you think so far about um, my critique of his video about my video and you have a blessed day